no other country possess the diversity that India has. And maintaining unity in such a diversified country is not easy. And what recently we are hearing is about Dravida Nadu, the demand for a separate Tamil Nadu. Hello and welcome to the In Focus series section of Drishti IAS. I am Aisha Singh and in today's video we will be discussing about Dravida Nadu, why the demand of Dravida Nadu is in news so much. So let's see the timeline of the video, what all we will be studying. First, we will know about the news and the important points regarding the news that why Dravida Nadu is so much making headlines. Then how the demand for Dravida Nadu was initiated, how it started, then why Dravida Nadu. In the, then we will be looking at the historical background and what happened to the demand after the independence of India after 1947. Then about linguistic nationalism and assertion of Tamil identity. In the end, we will be looking into a prelims MCQ. So, this topic is of relevance from General Studies Paper 2, States Reorganization Act. See, from exam perspective, it is important to know about the historical background, what happened after, after independence. Linguistic nationalism, this remains very much in news and then assertion of Tamil identity. See, knowing about the linguistic nationalism is important because that has been a part of our history and is also presently also in so much in news. So, let's see what is the news and this news has been taken from the explained section of Indian Express which reads, A short history of the demand of Dravida Nadu, its evolution. So, the core point of this news is about Dravida Nadu. So, what is Dravida Nadu? See, recently what has happened that the ruling party of Tamil Nadu that is DMK. So, one of the member of parliaments of DMK that is A. Raja who is an MP from Nilgiri in the presence of the Chief Minister MK Stalin has said that if centre will not give greater autonomy to Tamil Nadu that Tamil Nadu wants greater power and greater autonomy and if centre will not provide it, then Tamil Nadu will be compelled to revive. The word is revive. Will be compelled to revive demand for separate state. So, he said that if the centre will not give in greater autonomy to Tamil Nadu, then Tamil Nadu will be compelled to revive demand for a separate state of Tamil Nadu. And that separate state of Tamil Nadu is called Dravida Nadu. Then A. Raja has written on Twitter, these are the exact words, that Chief Minister is walking on Anna's way. So, who is Anna? The first Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, that is Anna Dorai. Don't push us to Periyar's way. So, who is Periyar? We all know about him. We have studied in history. We will just be looking into it up in detail. Don't compel us to ask for our own country. Give us state autonomy. Until then, we will not rest. So, he, he has written that they want, Tamil Nadu want greater autonomy. And with except this, he has also written that national integrity and democracy are important for a nation. So, let's see that how demand for Dravida Nadu was initiated, how it all got started. So, first let's see the map of India. See, this is the map of India, the southern states. So, who all are the southern states? This is Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, the first uh, state which was formed on linguistic lines and now uh, the most recent state in southern India is the formation of Telangana. So, let's see that what happened that how the demand for Dravida Nadu was initiated. So, let's first see about the E. V. Ramaswamy Periyar. So, E. V. Ramaswamy Periyar had started the self-respect movement to redeem the identity and self-respect of Tamils. See, earlier what used to happen that in everything it was the, it was considered to be a Brahmanical society. So, everything, the caste system was so dominant that the Brahmins were considered to be the top class. So, everything, the Brahmins was considered the prime most uh, people. So, Ramaswami, Ramaswami Periyar 
started the self respect movement to redeem the identity and the self respect of tamils so he also demanded an independent dravida homeland of dravida nadu for the people of tamil then in this in dravida nadu he considered the people of tamil malayalam telugu and kannada speakers see tamil speakers is tamil nadu malayalam is kerala telugu is andhra pradesh and telangana earlier it was one andhra pradesh and kannada is karnataka then he also started a political party which was named dravida kazgam that is dk now let's see about the who was c n annadurai and the role played by him then he was the last chief minister of madras state and the first chief minister of tamil nadu so first let us look at about let us see about the madras state see this is india's map at the time of 1947 that british india during partition so see this was the madras state then uh, in 1950 republic of india then also this was the madras state this full area was madras state then in 1956 india after linguistic reorganization so after 1956 the demarcation of the boundaries took place and there were visible boundaries that came to india and the different different states were formed so this became tamil nadu this is kerala this is karnataka and then andhra pradesh was one at the time of linguistic reorganization of states that is 1956 so these were the southern states so if you will see that between 1956 and 1950 there is difference see these are different states while these are there is difference between that map Uh, of 1956 and of 1950 so here the area of tamil nadu and parts of kerala karnataka and andhra pradesh all this comprised the madras state at that point of time at around 1940s 50s so let's see okay so uh, c n anna dorai was the last chief minister of madras and the first chief minister of tamil nadu and he also formed his own party and that was dravida munnatera kasgam that was dmk and who was who's the present party ruling in uh, tamil nadu is then he formed dmk after breaking with periyar so periyar and annadurai was first in starting were working together and after they had their ideological differences they parted ways then he was mainly working for greater autonomy for tamil nadu and be better cooperation among the southern states so he he was very he was little slow as compared to periyar on the demand for an independent dravida nadu and this is what created a ideological difference between periyar and annadurai so now let's so now let's see that why the demand for dravida nadu is raised time and again so there are few points that we need to look, see is first there is contradiction with policies of central government so the southern states or the tamil people they are not happy with the policies that central government makes or they have contradiction between the policies so the people of uh, southern india or the people of Tam or the tamil people are not happy with what the central government does with them and they also think that it undermines indian federal structure as in normal circumstances the state and center are equal no one is superior or inferior so they the tamils uh, the they demand greater autonomy that greater power should be given to them and their southern states are always in opposition to hindi language recently also what we have seen that our home minister on hindi devas said that hindi can be a, a language of unity in india that hindi can unite people in india so the southern uh, states objected to it and the southern states are also against the three language policy so they do not want to include hindi in their 
subjects or they do not want hindi in their school subjects or uh, students should be taught in hindi then financial constraints that is devolution of finances see the finance see the finance commission devolve uh, the finances based on certain measures so uh, it is about the area of the state or the population of the state so according to these the southern state feels that major chunk of the money goes to the northern northern india states like up bihar or uh, madhya pradesh while the southern indian states they receive lesser amount so they so they are not uh, happy with that and then in the end the north south divide that we always see in news so now let's see that what is the historical background that how the name dravida nadu came into prominence or how it came into picture so let's see that the south indian liberal federation which is also known as the justice party was founded in 1917 by tyagaraya chetty t m nair and mudaliar and they were the first one to raise the flag of anti brahmanism as at that point of time the caste society was very much prevalent and they were, it was the brahmans who was considered at at the topmost in the caste system so they were anti brahmanism and they opposed the caste system and the demand that they made was opportunities for those lower in the caste hierarchy so they demanded opportunities for the people who were sitting at the lower positions in the caste hierarchy so that they also get the opportunities to do well for them and they should also get uh, opportunities and status in the society not only brahmans should get everything then in 1920 then what happened in 1920 that the justice party won the first legislative council elections and they formed their government and this was under the act of 1919 and at this point of time the indian national the indian national congress did not participate in the elections so the inc that is indian national congress did not participated in the elections and the justice party won the elections and they formed their government and they remained in power until 1920 Six that is from nineteen twenty to nineteen twenty six, and then again they formed the government from nineteen thirty to nineteen thirty seven. Then then comes the role of Periyar. That Periyar was both anti caste and anti religion. He was also working for social reforms. Then he also worked for equality for women. Then supporting child birth control for women with respect to their health and well being. so he also opposed the domination of hindi see if you will see the opposition of the opposition for hindi language has always been there in the history so he also opposed the domination of hindi and emphasized the distinct cultural identity see cultural identity plays a very important role because culture is something that defines a state or culture is something that defines a nation so he emphasized the distinct cultural identity of the tamil nation then in 1938 the justice party and the self respect movement they come together so the justice party and the self and the the justice party and the self respect movement they come together because they were working for the same cause they were against brahmanical society they were against caste system so they came together to work then what happened in 1944 that a new outfit came to that new outfit was named and that was dravida kasgam that was dk then it was also anti brahman anti congress and anti rn and they launched a movement for an independent dravida nation and that independent dravida nation was dravida nadu so the dravida kasgam was also working towards the independent dravida nation called the dravida nadu so let's see that what happened after independence that what happened after 1947 see if you will see this picture then this is a very very 
epic picture this is periyar and this is annadurai so let's see that what happened after independence was that dravida kasgam they continued to demand our dravida nation and the justice party was also uh, was winning the elections but periyar was not willing to stand for election so periyar refused to contest election while dravida kasgam it continued to demand that dravida nadu that is a separate dravida nation so what happened in 1949 was annadurai and periyar they parted ways because of the ideological differences because annadurai wanted to fight elections while periyar was not willing to fight elections so the dmk joined the electoral process and what was the roles on which it was playing or what were the grounds on which that they were con contesting the elections was social democracy and tamil cultural nationalism so what happened was after independence was that because the periyar and annadurai they parted ways so the demand for a dravida nadu that is a separate uh, dravida state was started weakening because the people were not working together now so it started weakening so what happened in 1967 was annadurai became the chief minister of madras now let's see about the linguistic nationalism see linguistic nationalism is a very important topic linguistic nas nationalism has been asked is constantly being asked and you need to know about the history of linguistic nationalism because that will help you in writing gs paper 2 answers that will also help you in essay so it is important so listen carefully see linguistic provinces commission also known as the sk dhar commission when it was set up what happened was they were they were against what they said was they were not in favor of a linguistic basis of reorganization of state as they thought that this will lead to the further division of the country see what happened in 1952 one of the most landmark event from the perspective of linguistic nationalism happened that the freedom fighter poti shriramulu died after a 56 day hunger strike so what happened there was so much of political pressure and the people were so angry that the then prime minister was so much pressurized to take a step from from the perspective of setting up of different states from linguistic from linguistic nationalism so what happened that in 1953 the states reorganization commission was constituted the states reorganization commission was constituted and in 1953 the state of andhra pradesh came into being so the first state which was formed on the linguistic lines was andhra pradesh after the states reorganization commission was constituted and the states reorganization commission talked in favor of a linguistic division of states so what happened was the states reorganization act and then it redrew it redrew the boundaries of state along linguistic lines see this is very very important point So according to the states or states reorganization act it redrew the boundaries of states along the linguistic lines and it created the state of tamil nadu andhra pradesh mysore and kerala in southern india andhra pradesh being the first one formed in 1953 see this map see this is andhra pradesh tamil nadu this was kerala mysore so all they they the boundaries became prominent it redrew the boundaries on linguistic lines and the states of tamil nadu andhra pradesh mysore and kerala came into being and the major demand of the linguistic movement uh, was fulfilled and the demand for the dravida nadu was weakened so the idea of an independent dravida nadu was weakened even further because the demand of the linguistic states was fulfilled 
so the dravida nadu demand was it became very very weak so now let's see that assertion of tamil identity that why tamil identity is so important for them so it is because of the preservation of tamil culture and language see preservation of culture language and script is very important for the for their own people then uh, the the tamil identity has always been opposed to the three language formula that is hindi language they have always been opposed to include hindi then protest the introduction of hindi in education they always protest against hindi then the demand for dravida nadu was gradually replaced by a demand for greater autonomy in education and cultural practices so this is how the whole story revolves around the dravida nadu or how the topic of dravida nadu came into prominence so in the end let's look at a prelims mcq that is which among the following statement is or are correct regarding the hindi language the first is the constituent assembly of india adopted only the hindi written in devanagari script as the official language of the country and second is article 351 gives power to the union government to issue a directive for the development of the hindi language so you you people need to tell me the correct answer in the comment section and the codes given are one only two only both one and two neither one nor two so that's all for today thank you so much for watching till we meet next time keep reading and keep writing